Good evening. The purposes of National Sojourners is to organize commissioned officers, warrant officers, senior non-commissioned officers, and members of the uniformed forces of the United States and honorary members who are Master Masons into chapters for the promotion of all patriotic aims and activities, for the development of patriotism and Americanism throughout the nation, and for the opposing of any influence whatsoever calculated to weaken national security. This evening's program is presented by the Heroes of 76, Fort Leavenworth Chapter 154 of the National Sojourners. My name is Herb Merrick. Assisting me this evening is to your very far right, or my far right, Brother Nick Hinky and Brother Rick Riker. <coughs> President Wilson once said, this flag which we honor and under which we serve is the emblem of our unity, our power, our thought, and the purpose as a nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choices are ours. It floats in majestic silence above the hosts that execute those choices whether in peace or in war, and yet, though silent, it speaks to us in the past of the men and women who went before us and the records they wrote upon it. The first flags adopted by our colonial forefathers were symbolic of their struggles with the wilderness of a new land. Beavers, pine trees, rattlesnakes, anchors, and various life insignias with mottos such as hope, Liberty, appeal to heaven, or don't tread on me, were affixed to the various banners of colonial America. Congress authorized our official flag on June 14, 1777, when it was decided that there would be a star and a stripe for each of the colonies, and then by the year 1792, there were 15 stars and stripes. In 1818, Congress enacted a law declaring the flag of the United States be 13 horizontal stripes, alternating red and white, a white star to be added to a blue field upon the admission of each new state, the star to be added on the 4th of July following the admission of that state. When the flag is folded, forms a triangle to remind us that our government is formed of three interdependent bodies, executive, legislative, and judicial. There are 13 folds, one for each of the original colonies, all encased in a blue field to remind us that they, as are we, under the care of a loving almighty God, a free and united nation. We have here a framework. We have named it the Constitution, the framework upon which these United States rests. Since we believe our flag is a symbol of the principles set forth in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, it is a perfect foundation on which our flag is to be built. Now, let us build this flag. The first stripe in our flag is red and stands for valor, zeal, and loyalty. We have often proved that we possess these qualities in great abundance. The first stripe is Delaware, the first colony to ratify the Constitution and become a state in 1787. The second stripe is white symbolizing hope, purity, and integrity. We place these virtues next to godliness. So the white goes above the red. This stripe belongs to Pennsylvania. As the third stripe goes in place, we are reminded that the name Old Glory was first given to our flag by Captain William Driver, 
of the brig Charles Daggett in 1831. This stripe represents New Jersey, which was the third and last colony to ratify the Constitution in 1787. The following year, 1788, eight colonies became states, starting with Georgia, which was the fourth colony to ratify the Constitution and ask for statehood. Her stripe is fitted into our pattern. Let us remember that Old Glory was first carried in battle at the Battle of Brandywine on September 11, 1777. As the fifth strike, representing Connecticut, took its place in 1788, you may be interested to know that on January 28th of that year, our flag first flew over foreign territory at Nassau in the Bahamas. And it was the French Admiral Lamont Piquet who gave our flag its first foreign salute on February 12th, 1788. The sixth strike is the last one to be fully visible. The remaining seven have a part of their stripe covered by a blue field in the upper corner on which the stars will shine. Massachusetts takes her place as the immediate support of the blue field. The blue union that you now see takes its color from the heavens and reminds us to be reverent to God, to seek truth, fidelity, and justice in all of our actions. The seventh stripe is now being put in place. The seventh state is Maryland. Proud to have the Blue Union cover a portion of her stripe of valor. The next state is South Carolina, symbolizing national independence and sovereignty. It is a flag of 321 million plus free people firmly united. To gain our ninth state, we traveled from down south to New Hampshire in the northeast. And that is how our nation and our flag grew, from the furthest limits of the American colonies. Our flag gave hope to all people that freedom would never perish. The tenth state represents a cautious colony the delayed ratification of the Constitution until certain that the Bill of Rights would be part of the guarantee of freedom. Only then did Virginia, the oldest colony and often referred to as the mother state, ratify the Constitution. In July of 1788, New York became the 11th state. She truly symbolizes hope, for it is here that many of our immigrant citizens first saw the shores of their new country as they entered New York Harbor and saw the Statue of Liberty, symbolizing hope for a new life. In November of 1789, by an overwhelming vote, North Carolina ratified the Constitution and joined her neighbors in the new union. You see there, her stripe is now being placed on a nearly complete flag. For finally in 1790, small but proud Rhode Island took her place in the union. And the 13th stripe is placed on the star. Though generally not known, the first official flag containing 13 stripes in the upper left-hand corner contained the British Union Jack. <laughs> the cannon with its crosses of St. George and St. Andrew indicated our relations with the mother country until the severance of those ties brought about with its replacement of stars in a blue field. 
This flag, if you see, was hoisted by George Washington in January of 1776 at Cambridge, Massachusetts as a standard of the Continental Army. And when used on many occasions until June 14th in 1777, when the Continental Congress convened in Philadelphia, entered into the journals of Congress one sentence with no introduction or explanation. Resolved, the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes alternating red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. This resolution left many unanswered questions. Proportion, dimension, arrangement of the stars, number of points on each star. These decisions were often left to the seamstress. Folklore has it that Betsy Ross made the first stars and stripes in her Philadelphia home, and the choice of the five-pointed star and this arrangement may well have been hers. The stars in the blue field proclaim this new constitution and remind us again that we are one nation under God. The stars were put on in the order in which the states ratified the constitution. 1787, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, 1788, number four, Georgia, five, Connecticut, six, Massachusetts, seven, Maryland, eight, South Carolina, nine, New Hampshire, 10, Virginia, 11, New York, 1789, Number 12, North Carolina. And finally, in 1790, the 13th state, Rhode Island. And this is how our flag was arranged at the beginning of our nation. It took the colonies over two years to ratify the Constitution. But we must remember that the lines of communication are much slower than they are now. Actually, 29 months were required to acquaint the colonies with the terms of the Constitution and obtain their ratification. Two additional stars and stripes came with the admission of Vermont in 1791 and Kentucky in 1792. This flag figured in many of the stirring episodes of our early history. It inspired Francis Scott Key to write the Star Spangled Banner. It was the first flag to be full flown over a fortress in the Old World when Lieutenant O'Brien of the Marine Corps and Midshipman of the Navy raised it above the strong home in Tripoli on April 27, 1805. It was our incident at the Battle of Lake Erie and was flown by General Jackson in New Orleans. Fearing that too many stripes would spoil the true design of the flag, Congress passed a law on April 14th of 1818 to return the flag to its original design of 13 stripes, providing for a new star to be added to the field as additional states came into the Union. And now in a pattern familiar today, let us watch and listen to the roll call of the remaining 35 states as their stars are placed in a blue field. I should warn you, there will be a test. <laughs> Six, number 16, 1796, Tennessee. Number 17, 1803, Ohio. Number 18, 1812, Louisiana. Number 19, 1860, Indiana. Number 20, 1817, Mississippi. 
Number 21, 1818, Illinois. Number 22, 1819, Alabama. Number 23, 1820, Maine. Number 24, 1821, our neighbor to the east, Missouri. Okay, you guys may not score real well. Number 25, 1836, Arkansas. Number 26, 1837, Michigan. 1845 saw two states, Florida, number 27, and number 28, Texas. Number 29, 1846, Iowa. Number 30, 1848, Wisconsin. Number 31, 1850, California. Number 32, 1858, Minnesota. Number 33, 1859, Oregon. Number 34, 1861, Kansas. Kansas. Number 35, 1863, West Virginia. Number 36, 1864, Nevada. Number 37, to our north, 1867, Nebraska. Hey. <laughs> Eight, 1876, number 38, Colorado. And then in 1889, four states joined the Union. Number 39, North Dakota. Number 40, South Dakota. Number 41, Montana. And number 42, Washington. 1890 saw two additional states. Number 43, Idaho. Number 44, Wyoming. 1896, number 45, Utah. Number 40 in 1807, correction, 1907, jumped 100 years there, Oklahoma. Number 47 and 48 in 1912, New Mexico and Arizona. Finally, in 1959, two states were added to the Union. Number 49, Alaska. Alaska. And number 50, oh, wow. Hawaii. There you see our flag in all its glory.